Hi, this is Darlene from Bad Girls Club, and this is my bad interview with Bad Justin JC. All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Justin JC here. I'm here with Darlene from the Bad Girls Club season two. Darlene, girl, it's been a long time, honey. Way too long. Way right. too long. How have you been, honey? So, um, I mean, good, bad, I guess. Yeah, good. Now good. I had a last, t well, who hasn't had a last tough year, right? Right. Uh, I had a last, two t 2019 was pretty bad, too. So, I don't know. I'm just trying to look for the future and see what it brings, because the past hasn't been so good to me, you know? Yeah, I feel you. So, so, I had a kid, another, ooh, so my oldest, Alea, yes. um, the one that was kind of a bad mom, too, um, she's in college now, okay. and, um, yeah, so she's a junior at Sam Houston University for criminal justice, so she got the smart end of the sticks, or whatever that's called. Right, right. And you said you had another child? Yeah, her name's uh, Zachary. She's uh, my little cutie patootie. She's like my little angel face. I just love her so. I mean, I love the oldest one too. I just wasn't in a good spot, you know. Right, right. But I always say that my mom. I was like, I have to stay here, mom, because I've been having like a really bad side pain on my side, on my left side. I don't know what it is, and I'm at the point where I'm just waiting for it in my eyes. So if I don't, if it doesn't go through, then um, this through this insurance thing, then. I'm just going to go to the ER at this point, so it's not bad. But anyway, so other than that, I always talk, keep telling my mom, like, what do I do? Do I just hold it out? Is it muscles? Is it nerves? You know, I just, I don't want to die. I have Zachary to live for. She goes, you know you have an older daughter, too, remember? And I'm like, yeah, but I, I feel like I made amends with her, and, like, she understands now, and she's older, and obviously, like, me being a bad mom has not affected her in any way. It made her everything better than I was, you know what I'm saying? Right, so. Right. But this little one, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can get into details. Let's just say I, I had a, a roughie. I was with someone for three and a half years, maybe four years, something like that. And I thought I was going to get married to the guy. And literally, I got. I guess I got comfortable. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to get married. I'm a mom. I, I have a beautiful new little girl. Like, blah, blah, blah. I found my soulmate. And then that was not what life had in store for me. So, it's a long story short, I have a protective order. And I feel like I have to be here for the little one in the long run, more so than the older one, you know? Exactly, right. She still needs me to protect her against this world, this crazy world. Right, right. So, I want to know, how did Bad Girls Club fall into your lap? So, uh, when I was, wait, like, around that time, I was, God, I was bad. Like, I was just <laughs> crazy. I just didn't give a F. I, I basically wanted to die. Like, I didn't, I was like, if just take me if you're gonna take me. So, I just did everything I could in case I was gonna die. And, I had no morals. I always tell my mom. She's like, you have no shame or morals. I'm like, well, you never taught them to me, did you? So, um, and then, but now I feel like I've, I've grown a little bit, you know, more shame and morals a little somewhat. So back then, I had been like, just God, in like rough patches, I get a rough, just going through a rough time in my life. So I got home. I lived on downtown 6th Street on Austin, and I got home, and my roommate at the time was going to fashion school, I think, at UT. And she was sitting there watching Bad Girl season one. And I was just like, and it was the scene where like Amy beats up on the other girl. The other girl whooped her ass. I forgot even. I just, I remember that girl because she was just loud and obnoxious. And I'm like, well, you, that's what you see me as? Because she's like, girl, you need to watch this show. You should so be on it. And I was like, nah, I'm good. And so I walked upstairs. I had just been coming home from an after party. And then I walked, I left to go to another after party and just not come home for it. That's, that was my life at the time. So my boyfriend, Osh, at the time, I mean, we were dating, and he had banned me from his club that was on Fifth Street. I wasn't allowed in, and I was dating the owner, only because I beat up his employee. Um, <laughs> one night on, well, it was on his birthday. That's what kind of made it worse. He had, like, he, you know, he's Indian, so they don't really, they, you know what I'm saying? They're really old-fashioned, very conservative, and I was like, fuck you, bitch, beating up on his employee to all these, his childhood friends, I guess, or college friends. I don't know. It was just embarrassing from him. I wasn't allowed back in. So 
my other friend uh, Don King called me and said, hey, they're doing a casting call for this show, Bad Girls Club. And I'm like, God, it's the one my roommate was watching. I wonder what, uh, fine. So, and she had said, she goes, you're all of the girls and above. You're uh, a mom, you're a single mom, you like to fight, you do drugs, you're crazy, this and that, you get drunk. And like, you know, I was basically ripsy, all of them in one, basically. Mm-hmm. And um, so I was just like, all right, cool. So um, I went to the casting call and I, the next day, <laughs> they did the interview like in the hotel room, mm-hmm. like, you know, on camera. Right. And when I went in there, she gave, she, we stopped. I mean, cause they talk about your whole life. They talk about you. So I got emotional at the time. I had an emotion. It's like, I feel like my emotion never leaves my life, huh? I had an emotional time at that time in my life because, you know, I, I had a daughter I loved so much that I wasn't being a good mom to and I just didn't know how to be. And I was also like 17 when I had her and the dad was in Mexico. Like, it was crazy. And I was, I mean, I'm mentally not, un, like, I'm stable now, but mentally back, you know, I was just a child, like right. a child trying to even just feel love from her own parents. So what the hell was I going to do with a child? And so, yeah, we stopped the camera a couple times and then just uh, from crying, you know, she got started crying because I started crying. And then she gave me a piece of paper and said, send a home video, but put it in your purse so the other girls don't see it. And I swear, I swear, Ash, my boy, and my boyfriend at the time was like, uh, He's like, are you sure you're not cheating on me? He thought I was, because they asked you to dress up, you know, like if you were going, like a date, like date ready, so they right. can have you in front of the camera. And he thought I, well, he dropped me off at some hotel to go, like, meet with some dude and come out. And I was like, oh, my God. Thank God I had the piece of paper, and I actually went to the next round, or he probably would have thought I was really cheating on him. <laughs> Seriously. I was like, oh, my God, that was hilarious, though. Oh, my God. But, yeah, so... The rest is history. I submitted my home video, and you know, I think the like day it was due, or the day, the night like before, and I was like, you know what, God, universe, if that's like I've always still thought of it like that. If they want me and it's meant to be, it'll happen. And sure enough, I like try not to stress. You know what I'm saying? I stress a lot, and I try not to. So right. things are meant to be, they'll be. Right. Even if it's a deadline, or if it's one day later, if it's just not meant to be, it's not meant to be. Exactly. So, the first girl you met was Tanisha. And I want to know what your first impression was of Tanisha. No, okay, listen. Listen, listen. There's a lot going on right now. And see, okay, how do I explain it? I don't know how to, okay, so I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't, okay, so when they did the casting call, they were like, what kind of girls do you want to in the house with you, right? Right. And I literally said, Oh, small little girls like me with big boobies. Okay, because that was my mentality back then. Right. You know, I was also, I was also, you know, like I, whatever. So, and then, and I didn't like tattoos, honestly, either. Like I always thought, if my whole, like I don't have any, my a lot of my family, like you know, my, I think my brother does on my dad's side, and we like, I don't judge him. He doesn't even like to show him to us. I think they were, you know. So I just, I just feel like something permanent like that is too. It's like no. And I also grew up thinking like. You know, tattoos were bad and not good and from evil and, you know, bad people, I guess, is, is how to say it. So, I told them everything I did not want in that house. And so, the first girl, and, and um, I have, like, how do I explain it? Like, black girl friends, obviously, and guys, like, my friend Darnell just called me this morning. I love him to death. Like, one of my, oh, I miss, I actually told him, like, y'all hung out last night. You didn't call me assholes. Like, y'all are, like, the two, like, him and my other, uh, my other ex. So, anyway, long story short. So, I, I'm, I'm not that I'm scared, but like, I mean, I like put it this way. She scared me. Like, she's really like, oh, she didn't give a fuck. You know what I'm saying? Like, she sat down. We were in a really nice hotel. She grabbed the pillow, starts smelling it, and says, "Oh shit!" Like, you know, just she was just Bronx, or right in that Brooklyn or whatever, like New York. Like, even New Yorkers, Boston people, they talk real rough, and they're just, you know what I'm saying? Right, right. Does that make sense? So it was just like different to me. I was I was like, oh, like oh my god, who is this girl? But Genevieve too. Like when I first saw Genevieve, like I was like, who is this girl? You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. <laughs> like I don't I don't know. I don't know. She came walking in with her two pistol tattoos on her thighs. I was like, what the fuck is that? So I don't know. So everyone was just so different to me. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know. And then Lyric, too, I mean, no judging. I mean, she just seemed a lot of hippie-ish to me. She had a wrap around her head. She was just cool. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Just, you know what I'm saying? Well, like, I, I don't know. Huh? So, so, so I remember after, you know, y'all all had met, y'all were headed to the house, and y'all were very excited to see the house. So what was that like in person? Oh, it was pretty. 
It was like a bar. It was surreal. At first, it was still surreal. Like, even when I, like, met the girls, you know, I think everyone was shy the first, well, I was shy, kind of standoffish. The first day date, like the day of, not that night. The night went crazy, but I just, you know, I was just kind of observing, just kind of like, uh, where, 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 where am I at? What am I getting myself into? And I just, I don't know. It was a weird experience. It's weird to explain it. I don't know, but when we got into the house, I just felt like everyone branched off. Like, Genevieve hit it up with Cordelia, or Lyric, and then um, Naveen and Hannah and uh, Tanisha kind of all hit it off. Well, Hannah and Tanisha did because, they, you know, they were from Brooklyn or from New York. And what's it called? Like, even like Hannah said, New Yorker, like, you know what I'm saying? They're just, they're up, they're like, she said they don't fight fair. They use weapons, remember? <laughs> so, uh, um, no, but, and so I kind of clicked with Naveen and Cordelia, but still, I guess, I guess that first night kind of split all that up. I don't know. I just wanted to form a bond with people. And I feel like when I first got in the house, it was kind of like, remember, I even had the back room by myself. Right, right. Like, so I didn't really feel like I was, I don't know. I don't know. Right. So I know you probably don't remember, but I know after y'all left the club when Tanisha had, um, <laughs> when Tanisha had kind of Wait, why do you say I don't remember? Because I must have been drunk? Yeah, girl, you were drunk, boo-boo. Oh, oh. <laughs> um, I'll you... give you that. Drinking still, not like my dad, like I don't have a drinking problem, but, 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 uh, let's just say if I, if, if I drink, like even now, like, uh, uh, old me comes out a little bit. Baby, you know it's okay. Saying? It's okay. <laughs> I'm not, but I'm just trying to do so good. Like, even my mom is like, every time we get in a fight or something, sorry, I forgot we're doing an interview. I just started eating a cookie. You good, boo? Uh, no, when my mom, I mean, argue now to this day, they should do a show about me and my mom. Like, she's just, like, the other day, like, day I was like, yesterday, actually, I was like, mom, I was like, hey, mom, I was like, yeah, I um, I have a friend of mine that's surprised I haven't gotten COVID yet, you know, because thank God we haven't, like, you know, right. and I've gone, I haven't gone out like that, but when I do go out for dinner, it ends up, you know, at a little party, but I do keep my mask on, I, even when I'm at the, I don't care who you are, if you're talking to me, my mask will be on, even if still people, I've gotten in arguments, because people are like, you look ridiculous, I'm like, well, you look infected, okay, so, um, no, but no, overall joking, I literally told her, thank God we haven't, she's like, she's like, oh, well, yeah, she's like, you know, being safe, blah, blah, and I'm like, she, I go, yeah, it's like, I'm surprised I, I go, it's like, I'm surprised I have never gotten herpes or, or, um, AIDS, like, as a joke, you know, because I used to sleep around a lot, like, you know, I had my ears of, like, having fun, and she's like, oh, that, that I'm surprised, I'm surprised, the AIDS not so much, because you don't like in the butt, but she's like, but yeah, she's like, but the herpes, I'm surprised you don't have herpes, are you sure you don't? What the fuck? Who said that to their daughter? Right. That's exactly what she said to me. And I was like, oh, God, this is what I have to live with for the next year because we just signed a lease together. <laughs> and, like, the other day I left the house. I'm like, Mom, have a good day. I love you. And then she was just like, she was just like, uh, you too, but I, bet, uh, uh, but I doubt it. I was like, what? I was like, see, why do you even, why do you say things? Like, why are you that miserable? It's like, and then every time we argue, she's like, when did you become a freaking saint? And I'm like, I'm trying to be. You're making it so hard. You're making it so hard. <laughs> right, right. Literally, literally. We went to, she went to jail in April, like, for, like, me and her fighting. It was just crazy. That's how bad it, it was during the beginning of COVID. So I feel anyone out there that lives with their parents or their significant other and wants to beat the crap out of them. Ba I feel ya. Baby, trust me. I I, that hits home for me, honey, because, boy, me and my daddy. <laughs> Woo. It's crazy, it's man. Crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. But, but that yeah. night, um, you came in and uh, you was wondering <laughs> what was wrong with Tanisha. And you were like, Tanita? And then they started laughing, and then she brought up the fat bitch comment that you made. Um, if, you, if, if you remember, did you think y'all were going to end up fighting that night? Y'all didn't, but did you think that was going to escalate? Honestly, at that time in my life, I swore I had superhero powers. So, like, I swore I was, like, invincible. I swear I could beat anyone's ass. I swear I, I didn't care, you know? And, like, what's it called? Uh when she came, like, when she literally, when we were at, in each other's space, I, yeah, I was ready to fight. Like, I told you, I got banned from my ex's, or my boyfriend at the time's bar, and wasn't allowed in, because I used to fight, and, like, I just didn't give a fuck. 
you know, the adrenaline starts hitting in, and I think I was so angry inside with everything in my life and my childhood that, like, when I would fight, I would just put all that shit into the fucking pain and to others. You know what I'm saying? So right. I was like, I was ready. I was like, bring it. Even if my ass got whooped, who cares? It was the adrenaline rush, you know? Right. But, but, but... <sighs> I, I, I didn't, I guess like I said, like I didn't really know any of the girls, so I didn't even, like now when I, like now that I know Tanisha, like it sucks that we all just didn't kind of click, I guess it wouldn't have made a show though, right? Right. I, it sucks like we like didn't right off the bat click, you know? But like I said, again, it wouldn't have made a great show, I guess. Like they knew, I guess they knew what to put into a house, you know, to make the drama. But honestly, getting to, and, 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 and it opened my, like it, it I just love, like, I don't know. I do love, I love that I lived in the house. It was an experience that I wish I could relive a little, and I would do probably a lot of stuff differently. Maybe not a, you know, maybe a, I don't know. But then again, that wouldn't have made a show, you know? Right, right. All that drama needed to happen. (laughs) Exactly. So, episode three, Spilled Milk, one of my favorite episodes of season two. Um, You and Naveen actually ended up getting into it really bad by the pool. Um, it went from throwing pizza to having a gallon of milk poured on you. Um, I want to know, and I noticed that this escalated only because you wanted to defend your friend Cordelia because you felt like Naveen and Hannah were being very um, petty and condescending with the comments that they were making. Um, looking back on that, do you regret how far you took it? or do you Me? Her? Me? How far I took it? Well, I mean, what I'm saying here. is, well, I mean, what I'm saying is, because of the fact okay. that I think, from a sense of, okay, that's your friend and defending her, do you still stand by the fact that you were defending your friend, or do you feel like, hey, maybe we could have just ignored Naveen's negative comments and just kept it true? No, no. Well, and once again, this is how I see everything nowadays. Perspective is everything. So, in my perspective, it was ongoing. It was constant. It was annoying. It was just frustrating. It was like why not needed you know what i'm saying right, like right. till this day so I, I still feel the same way till this day about that i mean obviously like again we were like we we were all brand new in the house that our personalities were just starting to get to and people had their own issues to where they were reflecting obviously like cordelia it hurt her feelings so i guess that's so she was reflecting those comments really did get to her so and i could see it as a friend to them they were just joking you know they were like god you guys take everything so serious calm the fuck down like kind of like you know chill out like who right. You know, we're just playing. But Cordelia didn't know that her problem was like she didn't know them that well. Like she didn't know them well enough for her to, for them to make comments like that to her after she, you know, said, you know, like it wasn't right. to her it hurt her feelings. And and like I said, she probably was still going through ongoing shit and emotionally that obviously she was, you know, it was hurting her. It was taking her. It was getting her deep. And like, and that just made me feel like, all right, chill out. Like, what's the point of this? And to them. They were just still, it was still a joke, even when you talk to them about it, you know what I'm saying? So I think after a little bit of alcohol and a whole day or so of like constantly just thinking it was a joke to make fun of someone and poke at someone, it was just, and, and seeing Cordelia, she, her spirits were coming back down, you know, like, like she, I remember seeing her, I could see her having fun and, and partying and then like I could see her demeanor kind of just come down and like her face would like you know get sadder after a comment or something and they would start laughing and it's like if the other person's not laughing then why are you right right so um but as for like i don't remember okay as for the pool thing (laughs) i guess okay you're right you're right you're right you're right i guess i could have communicated better and you know what i'm saying instead of like just just you know coming because again like coming at someone like I did I guess instead of I don't know how to explain it because what cause what happened is we just started escalating into a fight instead of like you know what I'm saying but I like throwing the pizza spinning on her and just trying to get in her face trying to get her to hit me so I could hit her back like I don't know and they weren't looking for a fight obviously you know what I'm saying to them it was just joking right and weren't y'all drinking that night too didn't liquor have a little I was okay. that's what I feel like I'm sorry but I always I feel like unless they're not big drinkers I feel like Hannah Tanisha and Naveen held back a little bit when it came to like drinking and you know like letting loose I guess unless unless and and, and on our part we took it a little too far sometimes like when we put stuff in their art like their food in our private parts and spit in their all this stuff we did a lot of bad stuff 
I think I think Genoisa urined in like their sprinkle thingies. Basically, the next morning the producer had to wake us up and we had to throw away all that food. Okay. I don't know if it was an episode. I don't even know if they aired it because it was like I think in one of the scenes you could see us like being really drunk, and yeah. that was the episode. Yeah, but they, anyway, they aired yeah. y'all doing it. We just they, they just they made they they basically edited it to look like they actually ate the food, basically. Oh no! Oh no! Yeah! No! 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 Oh no! No! Because apparently, when the producer saw it that morning, uh, uh, it could be a liability because they don't know if we—not that we have diseases—but you know, they don't—they don't know. And the feces and the urine and stuff should not have been like if, if they come in contact with them and one of them gets sick, even if it's right. not for that reason, they can sue. So we right. got to throw everything away. Right. Right. <laughs> so episode five. Good times. Good times. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so episode five, pop off. Um, this is where uh, the dynamic between uh, Tanisha and Cordelia hits the fan. Um, I want to know, during this time, and a fan wants to know this as well, um, how did you feel about how hard Tanisha was going at Cordelia? When, Cord- when Tanisha was going at... I think, Cord- I think Tanisha just was over all of us. So, And like I said, knowing Tanisha now, that's not her. Like That's not someone that just... I mean, not for what not for what was going on, you know what I'm saying? Right, like, right, right. obviously for other reasons I could see her doing that, but like, I don't know. I just feel like I said that was, that was a time in everyone's life. I think where we were all feeling some type of way or something and, you know, weren't we, you put out, it's like putting, putting like five stray cats in a freaking cage. What do you expect them to do? You know what I'm saying? Not saying we were stray cats, but, um, I don't know. I think, but I think, yeah, I think communication was the key word and that wasn't used throughout that whole season. <laughs> right, right. So, um, and then on Prank Wars Part 3, when Tanisha decided to do the pots and pans because y'all had kept her up all night. Was that a shocker to you when she ran through the house banging those pots and pans? So, I, I've seen that. Okay, so, first of all, we were supposed to write blogs, like, for every episode, and I would kind of recap, I would see, like, the preview, and then I would, I wouldn't watch the whole thing, because I was kind of just, after getting to know the girls, knowing everything I was going to have to rewatch and knowing, like, the past, it just really irked me to, like, have to watch myself, you know what I'm saying? Right. Especially watch myself get, like, sloppy and drunk and angry and just, or one, one episode where Tanisha's holding my, or I'm holding her finger or something, like, or someone's putting me in a choke, it looks so, I look so drunk, and I'm peeing in the alley, like, I don't know, let's just put it this way, like, I didn't like watching all the episodes, but I do recap the ones, like, you know, I remember, I didn't watch that whole episode, but I, I've seen the videos of her, you know, doing that. Right. And, but I do remember that night, the night before, so their bedroom was right by the pool, like, literally, their doors open to the pool, right? That big, uh, so, uh, like, on that, uh, yeah, so on the, on the side. So, they had the bigger room with three people in it, and we had, I had the one, the other ones had the, with the two beds. So, I think that night we had gone to Saddle Ranch and gotten drunk, and I think we were with, like, uh, Dr. Dre's son, Curtis, or something like that, and one of, some of Genevieve's other, like, tattoo artist friend, this big dude. And so, we went back, and I remember... They were all doing something outside, of course, in front of, like, Tanisha and all them's room. And, like, you know, they were being loud and trying to, you know... It, I don't know. They were just drunk and loud and obnoxious, and the other girls were already in bed. So, I don't know whose side to take, you know what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't expect... I mean, we're, we're on a reality show. Like, why are you sleeping? You know what I'm saying? Enjoy this life. Enjoy the house. Enjoy the pool. Like, but then again, who's peeing... So, basically, Genevieve peed in this guy's mouth, like that night and so she had been like walked over his face and like peed in him so that was all the commotion so the next morning oh we heard it we heard it we heard it we heard they were upset for sure let's put it that way but yeah i mean who does that at first i was like i thought she was kidding i I was even like what who does this and she's like in her nightgown and everything like that was her first reaction to get up and just fuck with us you know what i'm saying it wasn't like let me get up brush my teeth change let me cold it let me no she i feel like she woke up mad like she woke up ready to fucking take us on like for sure 
who does that? You know what I'm saying? Like, it was literally, that's probably the first thing she, like, no joke. She woke up and said, fuck these bitches. It wasn't like she was like, let me wake up, let me drink some coffee, eat some breakfast. No. She said, I'm going to literally fuck them up. And she did. She woke up and just boom, boom. I thought it was a joke. I was like, oh, she's she's playing with us. No, she was mad. <laughs> I remember um, I remember Naveen She did a blog video Back in the day about it And she said that Tanisha had said Yeah we're gonna wake up Early in the morning And wake these bitches up Since they wanna keep yeah, us up Yeah see And what I just tell you yeah. I feel like she all, all that was I, What did I just say I feel like She literally had that On her mind Was just Fuck this shit I'm fucking with these bitches As soon as she opened her eyes Like literally I could see it Boop Let's go Like it wasn't Like let me take a pee pee first Or anything Nope It was like Fuck these bitches Right. Oh, that's and that, funny. And that yeah. turned into and that turned into a big iconic moment still talked about to this day. Yeah, that's pretty funny though that like Naveen said that she literally did wake said the night before that she was gonna do that. Cause I literally just said she I swear that's probably the only thing that was what was on that's how it felt. You know, I could feel the energy of like we're and we're fucked. <laughs> Something's gonna happen in the morning and it ain't gonna be pretty. Right, uh, right. So later on in the season, I noticed that um, you were kind of, you were, you were starting to question how you really felt about, well, you, y'all were the party girls, so basically you were questioning how you felt hanging with those two, and you felt like they always wanted problems. Um, yeah, I guess that's what it is. Like, I, I, I'm not, like, I don't, I, drama, I always used to think drama followed me, or followed me, and I mean, maybe I, I was drama, I don't, maybe, I don't know, but I think at that point, I, the, the point of the show was to go to find, you know, it was, how do I explain it? The point of the show was to change, to learn and live off, each, like, off each other right. and, you know, live with each other and, you know, come to get, just figure out our issues to become better people. And I think that got, that, that I think has got lost around, like throughout the seasons, you know what I'm saying? Right. It became like, who can actually be and fight you up? So I think I had gone there with that mindset of like this is why I'm here I want to be a better person I want to be a better mom I want to have friends in my life I want to have a connection like you know a bond with you know a group of girls or you know and that can understand me and I feel like that's what I was going in there with and sure and like I could feel like Tanisha wasn't a bad person you know what I'm saying she has a big heart and she is a sweetheart and like I really do have so much love for her and I mean too like I feel like she's not a bad person either like I think she's just you know has a like you know she had a, she has a defense up and so you know her defense was to like you know just not take shit from people and if that means being a bitch then so be it and Hannah too I feel like has I think they all have like their walls up but then it was like you came to Lyric too I love Lyric but you came to like no, I don't know where Genevieve is in life now or what she's up to, but uh, how do I explain it? Like, I guess, and, and, and this is another thing, like I said, per, everyone's perspective and how they've lived and how they live life is totally different from mine, you know what I'm saying? So I I am the black sheep of my family, that means, like, I'm, I'm the, you know, I'm the bad kid, I'm always in trouble, I, I didn't go to college, I didn't do this, I'm, I was the single mom that still left my kid, you know, I haven't been married, blah, blah, blah. So, um... But what's it called? Um, I still communicate. And Genevieve, I feel like she just, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if that's how she was raised or what. But, like, she just, she, like, there was no, she, how do I explain it? I don't know how to explain it without just talking shit. Because I'm trying not to. But, like, if, instead of talking about it, she's like, no, fuck that bitch. Fuck that. Nah, you don't know how it happens in my hometown. Like, but, uh, but, like why? Like, why even that kind of, uh, you know, like, stop that kind of like mentality put your like you know your shield down and just be like all right let's give a hug and I feel like she just wanted to be the alpha female and she felt like Tanisha was stepping on her toes and I think Tanisha was just over the disrespect and you know what I'm saying like because remember that one episode where they got in that big old fight yeah sucker punch so that's what I'm saying I can't everyone had their own way of coming like basically we were like I said put five straight cats from different cities in one freaking cage what's gonna happen you know, we all want a loving home, but it's not going to happen by just sticking us in one home because we're just going to fight for it, for it, basically. Fight right. for survival. Right. But, <clears throat> yeah. And that's actually what I was about to get to. Um, one of my favorite, ep- another one of my favorite episodes, episode 11, Sucker Punch. This is the continuation of the fight between Tanisha and Genovesia. And I remember you were, when that actually started, you were like, stop, stop, stop. Um, so, what was that like in person? Mm. so my thing is okay so with 
that with the Tunisia and Genovese fight, like they were literally had they they were just feuding. Like there was no, I feel like there was <clears throat> no breaking that anger bond between them. You know what I'm saying? Like they were just gonna be at each other's faces. So it was bound to happen. Someone was gonna fight. So, um, but I think it was just more. I think I think that's what it was more more alpha female on Genovese side. And like, but since she was a friend and had been there from the beginning, I thought was a friend. Apparently, during that party we threw. I was so mad. And when I found out, when I saw it on TV, actually, uh, like, because remember, I, I saw in the previews and stuff, and I was like, wait, they did that? So I had watched that episode because Osh was in it, and he wanted to watch it. So we sat there, and I remember I was like, wow, that's fucked up. So in one of that episode, I thought they were my friends, and they saw that I was starting to, like, get along with Naveen and Hannah and Tanisha. And, you know, I love hanging out with them. Right. Like, I'm... I'm very adaptable to hang out with people that are good people. You know what I'm saying? And they are good people. They're all, you know what I'm saying? Our issues were all different, but in the end, we, like, came together. And so, Genovesia, though, that's what, this is what I'm talking about. So, Genovesia and Cordelia, I guess, we had agreed that I was going to take the car or something like that so I could pick up Bosch, blah, blah, blah. He was going to DJ that party. And they literally fucked me over with the ride. I don't know. I forget. I can't get in. I don't remember exactly how it was, but I was left with no ride. They were supposedly in traffic, and they were not. They purposely didn't give a fuck about me, and they said it, too. They're laughing about it and everything. That's not a friend to me. And I already had felt that energy. Like, I felt like, this is some bullshit. I, you know, like, right. they're not in an accident. They're not in traffic. There's, there's nothing that they're saying is true. Like, I could feel it. That's why... I was starting to, like, back off and be like, dude, whoop her ass at this point. Just do something. Like, you know, like, come on. (laughs) Obviously, Tanisha's seeing something I'm not. You know what I'm saying? Because if I'm thinking she's a good person and a good friend and she's treating me like this because I'm being friends with the other group, which, you know, I wasn't talking. I never went back and forth. I wasn't like like that. I wasn't like, oh, Jenna, you said this about you. Oh, Tanisha. I was always trying to just, I, I never let either of them talk about each other in front of, you know, like, till this day. Like, hey, I don't care to be in each other and then anyone's drama you know what I'm saying if they're not there in the room just don't talk about them that's how I see it so I think she thought I was I think her and Cordelia thought I was going back and forth talking shit about them and I was not at all and so they started fucking me over and to me that's just not a friend you know what I'm saying instead of communicating coming up to me and saying hey like we either we don't like you talking to them or hey are you talking shit to that something they were just fucking me over at that point leaving me without a ride having to get one in the middle of the night you know what I'm saying a cab at that time it was just right right right. unneeded shit that they were fucking me over at this point for other so at that point they did at one point they did get in a fight and I think they were going to only just send Genovese home I got mad because of that because I remember I threw a chair and shit because I was like what no it it takes two to tangle here and at this point like I said Tanisha had anger towards her too you know and so it take it took two and instead of getting one person in trouble I was just kind of I was like no then they both get sent home or something you know what I'm saying but then after the way she started treating me and the little things like that I was like Nah, at that point, whoop her ass. Like, and that's what I was about to get home. to. Right, and that's what I was about to get to. A fan wanted to know. So after that fight, the the producers gave them both a chance to stay as long as they went to the meeting. But the only person that went to the meeting was Tanisha. So the only reason why Genevieve had a chance at going home was because she didn't go. So the fans want to know, why are you so upset when Genevieve brought it on herself? You feel what I'm saying? <laughs> No, that's what I'm saying. At that point in my life, I was still seeing her as a somewhat friend. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay. I could feel that. I knew she wasn't. But then but then that's what I'm saying. I didn't feel so bad after. It was kind of, honestly, I'm not going to lie. When she did leave after all the tension, and like you said, she didn't show up. She didn't give a shit. Like, it was her. She wanted to be that. She. That's what I'm saying. Her mentality, and I don't know if she still has that mentality, was the same as like, I rule the world. It's my world. Fuck everyone else. Fuck what they have to say. I don't like authority. I'm not going to take authority. You know what I'm saying? Then I'm out. Fuck you. You know what I'm saying? So, and that's not a way to live life either. You know what I'm saying? Like, Tanisha was there. And then look at her now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's just, she just, she's just in her own little world, I feel like. And she was real, like, you know, fuck that, fuck this. And just didn't give a fuck about really anything. But in a, a bad way, not in like a positive, not, not even in a cool way, I feel like. You know what I'm saying? Like, right, right. It, it was just like, it was more like uh, in a corrupt, you're corrupting your own self kind of way. Like, and you know, like, that's not even a good look. I don't know how to explain it. So... Yeah, after that I started seeing, that's what I'm saying, I didn't feel so bad, and honestly, it was kind of like, because of me knowing all the shit that her and Cordelia were, like, going against me about, it was kind of a relief to have, when she finally left, like, it kind of, like, broke, you know, like, she took that pink elephant in the room or whatever, and made the air better. Right, right. 
So in uh, in episode fourteen, Bad Riddance, uh, Genevieve Hill was finally forced to leave the house because she quit her job. Because um, remember, they ended up voting Tanisha to. I mean, Tanisha and Naveen and Hannah ended up voting for her to stay out of out of being nice and saying everybody deserves. Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. Yeah. To Naveen and Hannah, they also had. But did, what what Naveen didn't? Why? Because Jen, because she didn't she didn't believe her, trust her, something like that. I don't know. Like I said, they should probably saw something we didn't. But. The point is, like, even Hannah and Tanisha, they were still nice. And, you know, like, I feel like Tanisha always still has a heart. Right. Right, right. No matter what. I feel like she still has a heart. So you could, oh, even if she's mad, I bet you could still, like, give her a little hug or something and be like, you know, and talk to her. But some people don't have hearts, and that's what makes them evil. Right, right. So Andrea replaced Lyric before Genovese left the house. I want to know, what was your feeling on Andrea when you first met her? I forgot about that. Oh, uh, um, just boring. You know, I, I think I've said it. Like, I just, I didn't know her. She's sweet and nice. Like, I knew her now. I just felt like she wasn't a bad girl. And then I felt like, again, they didn't bring someone in that I could get along with in the house. They brought someone that became Cordelia's best friend. You know, I like, again, I felt alone in the house. And it just sucked. Right, right. Um, I noticed that you took a lot of offense to her saying that I think she needs to be put somewhere where she can be helped. And you overheard yeah. the conversation. From my perspective, I took it as she genuinely wasn't insulting you. I took it as she, she was just saying, you know, she, I think she needs to do this because this is what's going on with her. But at the end of the day, you're right. Just like you said, she doesn't know you. So looking back on that, I want to know, do you regret kind of going off on her when you overheard it? Or do you stand by everything you said? You don't know me, so you don't need to speak on me. So, uh, I don't know how to even answer that. Like, um, I don't, like, okay, so yeah, basically that, like, okay, so just, re- like, just a little story. Recently, um, a friend of mine, I guess, a guy friend of mine's dad passed away and he broke up with his girlfriend. I didn't know that. He calls me, I'm about to go out a couple, this was just a couple weekends ago, and he was like, can I tag along? I'm like, sure, whatever. I was going to go out anyway. I had a couple parties. I had my shield, don't worry, my protectives and my protection. So we go, and we go downtown, blah, blah, blah. Another mutual friend of his ex and mine, she told me that apparently someone had told her, uh, the ex, saying like, yeah, Matt was out with some girl, uh, some stripper the other night. And first of all, I haven't been a stripper in years. And second of all, like, I sucked at it. And if you know me, I was not a hustler. I, I didn't like it. Like, the only thing that I had going for me is, I guess, I had titties. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was not good. And right. so, um, I wanted to take defense to that when she told me that someone, because that, that someone would still call me a stripper after, like, over five years or so that I still haven't even, and I was more a bartender in my life and a server than ever even a stripper, you know what I'm saying, if you calculate the years, so, but, of course, stripper sticks out in people's minds, and that's what they go with, you know, and so, I was gonna get mad, because I'm like, you don't, they don't know me, first of all, and why are they talking about me, but then I'm like, you know what, no, like, I don't care who they are, what they have to say anymore. And, like, with Andrea, at that time, I was so angry at the world. I was angry at myself. I was angry at Cordelia because I had been nothing but a friend to her. Because that's what I am, Just Like, I'll give you that. When I am a friend and I'll give you my all, like, I give you my all. Like, right. 100%. So, I guess I took defense to that to, like, okay, you were, you left me the night before to go hang out with Andrea. And now Andrea's over here talking shit. I need rehab. Like, weren't you in fucking rehab? Like, who are you? Like, who are you? to be talking like we I guess back to like why Cordelia was upset at Naveen and Hannah making comments it's like you don't know me we're not there yet as that close for you to be able to talk to me like that you know what I'm saying or use those kind of words or say anything like that about me you know so yeah sometimes I mean yeah like I think the reaction was a little excessive I was just angry and still kind of drunk from the night before Alcohol, alcohol, man. But yeah, I was still, I remember I was still drunk and angry at, from everything, so that's why. But, I, and overall, yeah, she didn't know me like that, so I don't think she had a right to make a comment, to be honest. Right, right. And um, there was one night, because a fan wanted me to ask you about this as well. Shout out to Randy. Um, he wanted to know um, about that fight with the guy outside the club, because honestly, that was one of your uh, big, iconic moments. It's all over you two. Um, how did, I don't even remember how that even got started, but she literally had him by his hair. I'm talking about knocking him. Bah, bah, bah. Um, 
I think he probably said so something our crazy. So friend Marcus says well, it was his birthday, and that was one of, I guess, I don't know if they used to have a thing or what, but I, I know he knew who he, of the guy, right? He called him Richard uh, Simmons or something, because he had the curly hair, and he was, and this is what I'm saying, I, I don't know if he was just, they had a falling out or what, but don't go fuck up someone's birthday. Don't go, you know what I'm saying? If you, and then the fact he was like, yeah, hopping up for the canvas, right? Licking his like middle fingers and flicking us off. And I'm like, you're the one coming, you're the, you're the one flicking us off, involving yourself with us. Like, what the fuck are you, we're, we're not doing shit for the cameras. So it had been a minute of us like, like, come on, get away from us, dude. So when we were going to go outside to smoke, I think Marcus was going to smoke there, or us, I don't even know, Cordelia, we started walking and I just felt, I didn't even, I was holding someone's hand and I just felt like my hair, like my head literally and my face just started getting wet. And then like, I looked and then my hair was drenched and I'm like, oh, hell no. So I go, who the fuck did that? And Marcus like, well, he's over there and started pointing and nods and I was like, uh-uh, dude, uh-uh. I was like, you don't touch my hair. Wow. But you know, I mean, in general, I was just mad because like you had been, he had been fucking with us, you know, and so the anger kind of built up too. Like, come on, there's no more talking to this dude. Right. And do you ever like, do you ever uh, see or you know hear the the positive comments that you get from fans to this day? They're like, damn. Let me tell y'all something, Darlene. She was a badass bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Do you ever hear that? Do you ever read that anywhere? Like, the fans really, they thought you were the shit back then, girl, because you just didn't give a fuck. No, apparently, apparently I'm just a stripper, bad mom. I read some articles where people say that, and it's just like, ugh. before it used to get to me, and now I'm just like, whatever. Everyone's going to have their opinion, you know? Oh, I've never seen that. I feel like maybe nowadays, I think it's significantly changed that looking at just the um, the legacy of it all, being that the show is over, they were like, wow, that was a real bad girl right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but... Okay, and speaking on the... But that's what I'm saying. I guess, like, doesn't... Don't be a bad person. Be bad in, like, traits, but not a bad person. Have right. a heart, you know? Always right. have a heart. Right, right. And speaking on, you say the boy threw the drink, that actually brings me to another one that you got into. Um, Because I see... I know right now, girl, you don't play about the motherfucking drinks, boo-boo, period. Y'all was at the club. I think this was actually one of the last... Maybe one of the last nights out. It was you, Tanisha. Well, you know what it is, Justin? I've heard that if you throw something at someone, then you could whoop their ass. Because, or if someone gets... You know, that's called self-defense. So as long as I see something get my way, that's my case. And then if I whoop your ass, that's on you. Right, right, right. And legally, I think I think it's a charge if you throw a drink in somebody's face, honestly. So it is self-defense, definitely. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I learned yeah. that a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> right. So y'all were at the club. Uh, Hannah gets into it with some random girl, and in your confessional, you was like, all of a sudden, I feel somebody throw a drink, and that's when I just snap. And we see Tanisha, we see Hannah and Naveen just over there. I think Naveen throws a drink. Next thing you know, Darlene, you come across the couch with this girl. You got a hair. You just, whoo! Bling yeah, that's that how I felt. I threw her into the couch. Like, yes! I, I was, girl, let me tell you something. When I saw that, I was like, yes! Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> Because he was not playing no fucking I'm game. Like, Damn, I'm not saying I'm not saying I wouldn't get that crazy now if I had a reason to, but that's you know when you're younger you just don't give a f and you know. The reason why I was saying yes was because of the fact that I'm I love it when people just I just love it when people don't take shit. I love it when people. I, are like, I bet you, know you what? she learned her fucking lesson. Sorry for my cussing. Oh, you good I girl. I assure you she learned her fucking lesson to go anywhere and talk shit to anyone. Dude, I'm sorry. I've met some girls and even recently a girl that I had beef with who's irrelevant in my life and I met I saw her out recently and I was just like talking and I was like okay you know what? I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt I'm gonna talk to her and she still talks shit and it's because I never have whooped her ass because I you know I don't want to go to jail again and so I try to be the bigger person and even recently I was like god you still just have to talk shit to make yourself relevant in my life it's like she purposely wants me to know that I need to know she's she somehow exists and that's by talking shit to me right right so annoying and so that night that girl too she was literally like uh when we went out we always had like some people that were just annoying you know what i'm saying you know um there's always those drunk you know frat boys that are always like ah! so we always had that when we'd go out i feel like and we had had a bodyguard that night because they were watching me so i wouldn't drink as much because apparently i was a liability so 
every time I would try to sneak off and get a shot because they were telling me I couldn't drink, I guess that some shit was going up there with the Hannah. Remember the bracelet? I guess that all was going on, and I didn't even know. So then by the time I snuck in some shots and went through the bathroom, this and that, and came back up, I was kind of tipsy at that point. And you know what I'm saying? I had already been drinking. And uh, so when I got up there... Uh, and I felt that drink, and I was like, and then I saw the bracelet. I, I didn't know Naveen had broke it. I thought they, it was one of our girls's, you know what I'm saying? And that's when I was like, and then the drink got thrown, and I'm like, oh, hell no. You know, like, you have to protect your friends. <laughs> exactly. 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 Oh, and by the way, after the fight, so I was just mad because the drink did get thrown. And at this point, like, whatever. So I came back, and then when I was kicking her, and I wasn't letting go, and just kicking everything, and I guess production got on top, and they separated us. When we were all getting like thrown out, literally I got thrown out through the back door with some of the girls, and then Naveen, I think, and Hannah, and to me, you know how we're over, like, they got thrown through the front. Like, it was a small little space of stairs, so it was either the front, back, and after the fight, they just wanted us out. So literally, we had door guys, crammer crew, just people just pushing and shit. So... I guess the guy who had busted his, like, uh, head, but obviously it was no one from us. It was probably from the fight or everyone throwing, or you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Maybe my heels when he was trying to get his girlfriend. I don't know. So we were in the back alley trying to figure out where the other girls were, what's up. I never even knew the cops got called until the limo came to pick us up in the back, and we got in the limo, and I was like, wait, where's Tanisha? What? What's going on? Like, we had, we, they wouldn't let us go, and so... They wouldn't let us go to the front to find the girls. And I guess I don't know what was going on in the front was going on. So I don't know if they did it on purpose to say, hey, just stay back here. Or they just didn't know what was going on. So everyone was just like, just stay put. You know what I'm saying? Or if they really were like, you, we don't want you to go to jail. Let one of them go to jail. You know, I don't know. I don't know. I never know these days, especially with like production and cameras and shit like that. Uh, well, if that, I mean, if that was the case, then that's really fucked up on production. Yeah, because cause I even asked them when I got in the car. I'm like, no, where is she? I'll go to jail. I'll go to jail. I was, dude. I swear to God, I'm. Come on now, I'm not one of those. Like, if I knew I did the fucking crime, I'll fucking pay. I'm not one of those people ever. Right, right. Not, especially Tanisha. I mean, like in my eyes, that was my friend, and you know, I would, I would have rather been there than her. So. But then again, maybe that's why production did let her go because they had proof that she wasn't even involved. You know what I'm saying? And so maybe I would have been there longer. I don't know. You never know. I don't know. I just know that they wouldn't let us go to the front to check on the other girls. And the only time we met up with them was after the limo came to pick us up in the alley. And by then when we got in, we didn't see Tanisha. And I remember I was like, I'll go. Dude, how do I switch her place? And they're like, no, they already took her. So. Damn, and I remember when she came back, she was pissed. And she oh, I was just thinking that right now, and yeah, I was like, I was just remembering when I got, oh, oh, my stomach just hurt. I was just thinking after I just said that, I was like thinking of myself when Cordelia was in the in there talking to her on the phone while she was in jail, and like how I was like sitting there and I tried to get on the phone with her to tell her I loved her, and I'm so sorry, and she fucking hung up on me. I think, or I was just like, I started crying, like because in the end, like I, did, she, it's like I said, for everyone's story, everyone's perspective's different. Her perspective is she didn't do shit but want to have a good time, and Hannah and Naveen and me are always talk, you know, or just in general, there's always drama, and she was just trying to have a good time, and she's the one in jail. I'd be fucking pissed too. Right, right. And I remember, I'd be, um, I'd be whooping some fucking ass when I got out. I'm not kidding. I'd be fucking, I would have probably broke the fucking house and destroyed it. I, I, knowing myself, oh, uh, back then, <laughs> I don't know now, but, <laughs> yeah, I think if I had been in Tanisha's shoes and I came back to the house, I would have been like, oh, hell, fuck all y'all, and I would have fucking destroyed everything. Yeah, I love you and Tanisha's um, dynamic because I know, I actually read one of y'all Instagram. She posted something on Instagram and you was like, hey girl, I miss you. And she was like, yeah, I'm so sorry. I really do. I want her to come. You know, I know it's COVID and it's crazy and we have kids now, but I, I would love to see her and Amber meet. I never met her in person, but she's someone that I've always clicked with. And honestly, like, I love her, and I would love to finally meet her, and I was, like, I would just, like, she's, when I remember her season, I think I watched it until then, and then some of Judy's, but in Flor, Florina, and so there's some episodes that I would go back and, like, see, at seasons I would try to watch, you know, just to keep up, but some of them I just couldn't no more, but anyway, um, so, yeah, but Amber's someone I've always wanted to see, so honestly, yeah, I think one of my bucket lists would be, like, to have Tanisha and Amber and Cordelia come to Austin, Texas, and then we could all do, like, a fun girls' night. Like, and if not, Tanisha, at least, right? 
<laughs> right. So out of all, hey, Amber, what? you can go too. Right. 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 But I just miss her, and, and I feel like, like I said, what did I just say earlier? I said, I wish, again, it wouldn't have been a show, but I wish I had known now, too, like, in the beginning, instead of fighting with Tanisha and arguing, because I think we would have had so much fun together, you know what I'm saying? But, right. I don't know. I love her. I love them all, in one way or another. They have all been a part of, obviously, who I am now. Right, and who all from the show do you still talk to, or who all were you cool with afterwards? Um, and you know, this is the thing, like, I guess I'm always saying, like, I wanted to feel like a bond and be like, because I've never had that, you know, like, I have a lot of friends, I just don't feel like I have, like, a group of, like, tight-knit friends, so, but I think that's just on me, you know what I'm saying, like, I don't really keep in touch with people, how long have you been trying to get an interview, you know what I'm saying, I'm always right. on my phone, how, somehow I'm always on my phone, but I'm never on my phone, <laughs> like, it's weird, like, I, I don't know, so I just don't. I don't know, so I never really kept in touch like that with anyone, but like Cordelia and Naveen and Lyric and Tanisha, of course, I still follow and, you know, will message here and there. I haven't messaged Naveen or, you know, just do like comments and stuff. I just, it's, life is just what, you know, you can't really just say, hey, like, let's go hang out. Everyone's in different cities and stuff, so, and especially with the world the way it is, that's going to be harder, but yeah, I really... I mark my words, a bucket list. I want to keep putting it out in the universe that I get to see my friends here in Austin and I can show them what Austin, Texas is all about. Right. I think we'd have some fun. We can go to the lake. We can go to Twin Falls and hike. We can go, you know? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I'd have some fun with them. Right. And have you heard from uh, Genevieve since the show? Because the fans can't find her anywhere. No, that's what I was, I, I, that's what I told you in the beginning. I don't know who or what she's been up to or anything like that. To be honest. Or Hannah. Hannah's another one I miss. But Cordelia's still smart as hell. I've seen that on, on Instagram. So smart. She's always been smart. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and then, I mean, Tanisha. I mean, duh. That's, that's Queen Tanisha. And then, <laughs> right? And then you have Naveen. She's looking great, too. Yes, wonderful. Yeah, she looks really good. Like I said, they've always had... They've always had hearts. There's, you know, like I said, you can be bad, but just still be a good person. Right. And did you expect all the all the stuff that Tanisha got to do with bad girls afterwards? Like, I'm sure. Did you even expect the show to to divulge into all of that? No, I actually had gotten a call back and even flew out to LA to do like everything, and I even met with the ther- like the psychologist and stuff for uh, for the love games. Love games. Too. Season two. Oh, but okay. then I guess apparently they called my references, and at the time I had like an off and uh, again on again boyfriend, and they found that out. And obviously, they don't want girls on there with like boyfriends. You're supposed to be finding love, you know. And it doesn't make a show if I'm like can't kiss you, touch you, and let you fondle me, you know. I need to be free. So, but yeah, that's what I heard. That that's the reason why. But I was supposed to get on that, and then other than that, to be honest, I love the success that Tanisha. And, Natalie and whoever, all the other, like, for, for, you know, like, all those girls, Judy, um, and the other ones for all the other seasons. I don't know. I always tell my mom, like, I feel bad. Like, I've had opportunities, too, but I, I honestly feel like, uh, how do I explain it? I feel like a lot of my thing was, like, drugs and alcohol, you know what I'm saying? So, I'm even just blessed to be alive right now. Right. But, in general, like, that shit fucks with your life, and so I've lost a lot of opportunities from just things that I shouldn't have been doing and putting in my body. Right, because the, fa- the fans were really, um, the fans were just really baffled at, because the, they, they just assumed that they didn't call you for anything, but I was like, no, I'm sure she got called for something. I mean, she had to No, be- I did, but yeah. yeah, that, that, that's, yeah, that's what happened. Was Love so. Games the only uh, project that they called you for? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so in season two was, uh, it was Natalie, Amber B, and... Leah from season five. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I would have done it. They should do it now. I need to find love ASAP. <laughs> did you ever catch, um, did you ever catch the all-star battle? No. Was that the, was that the, the one that they did? Like they, I don't even know what that, what they just like, uh, they bring a bunch of all-star bad girls from other seasons and they compete for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, no, I don't th- not that I'm aware of. Would you have done that? Yeah, for sure. What okay. do you mean? Anyone could use a hundred thousand dollars. Period. Period. And then they also did a season thirteen redemption where they brought 
um, girls from other seasons uh, to redeem themselves, um, would you definitely have done that? Which one? What is that about? Season 13, Redemption. It, it's basically, it's not like a competition show. This one was more like a regular season of Bad Girls Club, but it was all-star bad girls in one house to redeem themselves from their original season. You kind of get to see how they are now, you know? Oh, yeah, I would have done that. I'd still do it. They should do something. Like, why did they stop it? Do you know? Um, I heard that after season 11, um, their budgeting was cut. They lost a lot of sponsors. Um, a lot of, a lot of the original producers stepped out on them and, um, it was only, and it was only because of, um, well, more so because of the drama from season 11. Um, it kind of killed the ratings, you know, season 11, was a, season 11 was the season where there was a lot of jumping and a lot of bullying more so than how it was in the back in the day. Bull the bullying back in the day was kind of mild compared to what season 11 was. Season 11 was kind of a gang mentality type of thing. Yeah, I know. Yes. That's and, what I was telling you. See, for a little bit there, I'm not going to lie. I literally was like embarrassed. To be a part of Bad Girls Club. And I was just like, ah, that's not me, guys. That's not who I'm not. That's not I'm not darling. No, no, nope, but I, I never did those things. I, I never said that stuff. <laughs> but but only because of what I had become. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not that I'm judging and not that. But it lost the whole respect. You don't, that's not good to go try to bring people down. Like, I'm not, I'm not okay with that. That's what I'm saying. Don't be bad to be bad, like, and evil. Make sure you're still good at heart. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't take shit from people. Stay on your ground. Fucking whoop someone's ass when you're, you know, in someone's in need or you're in need or an animal in need. But, like, don't go out there trying to ruin and bring someone down because you're obviously going through some shit. That's not cool either. That's not being bad. That's just being evil. Right, right. So then, um, I think afterwards, they, pro they I think after season 13, because season 13 was, was originally going to be the last season, but they decided to try to revamp the show for season 14. So I guess their mindset was, if we don't let these girls jump, we should have a good show this time. But they fucked up again because they let the other side of the house fuck up those girls' as shit. And, oh my God, it was terrible. Like, And then how hell broke loose? All hell broke loose. They fucked that house up. I mean, it was terrible. So they fucked up again. So it's like, you know, they kind of just put the last nail in the coffin with that season. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, don't be trashy about things. I mean, don't trash things. Don't trash people. Don't trash, you know, be, be classically bad if that's a thing. <laughs> right, right. So, um... The last episode, y'all were leaving, um, and I remember uh, y'all got to the airport, and you got very emotional about having to leave the girls, and I remember watching you cry. I actually started crying because y'all season had long. Like, back then, the first two seasons, y'all seasons was over 20 episodes. So it's like us watching y'all for so long, we kind of get to connect with y'all like y'all are actually in our lives. So when we actually watch the ending and see y'all crying and hating to leave each other as viewers, we're crying because we're like, oh, shit, they're leaving. We're not going to see them on TV anymore. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, I felt some kind of way for sure because we had just all started making a connection and everyone was finally coming to peace. And, and like I said, I finally had a bond, you know, with like a group of girls that we had gone through, you know, through an experience together. So... And we came out alive together, so it was kind of like, you know, like the Goonies when they kind of split at the end of the movie. When everyone's it's like any movie when they split at the end, it's like the ending. It's like that's why in the Veen. Oh my God, would love. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna reach out to them. Hopefully, when is COVID over? Do you know? Um, I know one of my friends. She was supposed to be getting married, and they told her that she can't have a full wedding until next year. So maybe next year. That's crazy, yeah. So just fuck in our bucket list. That'd be so much fun. Right, right. And we get to the reunion. Star Jones is the host. Um, as you know, later on after season seven, Tanisha started hosting the reunions, um, which I thought was, um, you know, I think was pretty fitting, you know, being that she did have that big impact that she did. Um, I, I like to ask all the other girls this because y'all lived with her. Um... If they offered you a chance to host the reunions or anything, would you have done it? Uh, the hosting for them? Yeah. Yeah. I think they just didn't think I had a personality, which is pretty fucked up, because I think I'm pretty great now. Oh, you are pretty great. <laughs> um, but, I, um, yeah, I would have done it. I think so. I used to say I wouldn't have done anything because of the way the show was doing, but before it got to where it got, for sure I would have, like, 
love to have done little spinoffs or done something too. You know what I'm saying? Like I think me and Tanisha would have done a great spinoff. You know what I'm saying? Right. And what was what was your um what was your weekly pay for uh Baggers Club if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I honestly don't remember me like seven hundred a week. Seven hundred a week. Okay. Wait, was it seven hundred a month or seven hundred a week? I'm gonna say seven hundred a month. No, it couldn't have been that little. I guess like. I don't know. If it was seven hundred a month, then y'all were making like two hundred a week, then at least. I wonder if it was that because think about it; it's just like over ten years ago. Yeah, because I know I know the newer girls they they were getting paid. Like, oh, they were banking. I yeah, heard. the newer girls they were getting like five hundred a week, something like that. So. Oh. Then yeah, then it was probably what seven hundred a month. No, I would. And could that have been? I mean, it was over seven, like ten years ago. Maybe I don't know. I really don't remember. But that would have been sad if I did that for seven hundred dollars a month. Right, right. <laughs> I'm like. And what was that? And what was that reunion stage like? You know what I'm saying? Um, it seemed like it was in some just random area. What was that building y'all were in? Oh, I don't even know. It was down right downtown LA or something like downtown that. Downtown LA, okay. And the audience, that was a real audience? Yeah, there was an audience. Okay. From what I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, So then. we kind of talk about who was all there. And Jonathan Murray said, if I didn't touch Andrea, he said, or the Jonathan Bruno Murray guy, yeah, he jo- said. Yeah, Jonathan Murray. Yeah. Yeah, Jonathan Murray said, if I didn't touch Genevieve, he'd give me my own show. So I didn't touch, or Andrea. So I didn't touch her. And I still haven't gotten my own show. So... Maybe if I put it out there in the universe. <laughs> yeah, um, Dina Marae, they're, they're pretty famous for promising these bad girls certain things and not following through on their shit, you know. Um, like I said, they promised Kristen from season five a show. She never got it. There was a lot that they promised. I guess they just, I guess at the time they'll probably tell y'all that just to get y'all to follow what they want you to do. Yeah. And you just never do yeah. it. You know. Um, Broken promises. Or what's that saying? Well, um, something about broken promises or something, 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 broken promises, whatever. You understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So, uh, at the reunion, were y'all actually watching the clips back on those screens? Because I know we saw what y'all were watching, but I just want to know, at the reunion, were y'all actually watching those clips on the screens when they would say, let's take yeah, a look? Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. We and that was so, one little... Like the Tyra Banks show. They would, like, bring them up. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, we're on Tyra Banks. I, yeah, I wanna, she walked out on us. I remember that. I wanna, yeah, I've seen that clip. I want to find the full episode so bad I can't find it, but I know she walked out because everybody kept arguing and she couldn't get a word yeah, in. Yeah, she was, and she was already feeling sick and stuff, apparently. And yes, she, but, like, but oh, weren't y'all on there twice, though? Yeah, yeah, well, the second, I think it was me, Tanisha, Cordelia, I think. I don't know if Naveen, but us three for sure. And then the, the, the first time was everyone. Okay, and what was the topics during that? Like, what were y'all on I think on the- mine was my drinking and trying to be a good mom. Okay. You know, like, just the, my struggles with, like, obviously alcohol and right. drugs, I guess. It was mainly, I guess it was alcohol, because then I went into drugs, and this was after the show. And right. then that's when I was, yeah. And now it's just nothing. 420 friendly here and there. Period. But anyway, um, yeah, so, and then with Tanisha and Cordelia the, la- the second time, I think it was for basically, like, uh, race, being racist or something, calling her a name or something, or it was during an episode. I don't remember something like that. Okay, yeah, it was when uh, Cordelia and Tanisha. Um, fat, it wasn't get. It wasn't kind of like the N word, but it was fat ghetto bitch, fat ghetto bitch. Something like that. Oh, yeah. is that what it was? That's what Cordelia said, and I remember she tried to apologize, and Tanisha thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> it was. It was a funny. I watched the clip. It was funny. <laughs> yeah. But um. I know the first time when you said it was everybody there, what was lyrics, the lyrics speak at all during that time? Like, was did they speak the lyric when she was on the Tower Bank show, or was she just kind of just there? Did, she was there? She was there, right? Yeah, she was I there. I remember, I feel like the lyric kind of just disappeared, and then just, like, she just didn't want to be a part of anything. It was like, bye, y'all. Okay. Never, never to see y'all again until I need to or have to. Okay. And, um... When Andrea had came out, I noticed you had started getting heated when she was saying what she was saying and everything like that. Um, I got a question, because I know the girls say they give them this. In the later seasons, they said before they would come out, they would give them as much alcohol as they wanted. Did y'all get the drink before y'all got on that stage? Uh, uh, no, I don't think they let us drink that time. I, I'm pretty 
pretty sure I, I don't think so. I'm not going to, don't quote me, but I wanted us sober, so we wouldn't be fucking crazy. I think, you know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure because I've seen a picture of a actor and I look sober, so I'm pretty sure that, and I wouldn't have been sober, obviously, if they let me drink before. Wow. So the dynamic of the show really did change in later seasons because they, they want the girls to drink in the later seasons before the reunions because they want to show them. Yeah, I think so. I'm not going to lie. I just think I'm pretty sure we, we had to wait unless it was one thing. But I don't think about it. I would have probably been a little more tipsy if I'd been there. I would say they would let me drink. Right, um, right. Yeah, pretty sure. So, because I, like I said, there's a picture. I, then afterwards, I think, is when I went. we went to go drink or something. I don't even remember. Why can I have a long-term memory? Right, right, and uh, when I remember when Lyric had uh, finally came out to the reunion, and when her and Tanisha had got into a really bad, what was that like in person? Cause I know they cut that up. That is so sad. Honestly, I feel like they would have had so much love for each other. I'm not just saying that. Like to me, that was just such a sad, sad, sad thing to see because they're just so cool and they're like both people like separately and so together like I know they would have like had like some cool moments and like memories together you know but I think like I said everyone had their own mental they were everyone was in their own kind of stage of life and and their own perspective and you know you know whatever they were going through so at that point I know Lyric was going through some stuff and had to be back anyway for some court stuff so you know it, it was just too much for her mental like for her mental state I feel so she left but I feel like her and Tanisha would have definitely gone along. And so seeing that anger between them, and it wasn't even anger. It just, I feel like theirs was just like, get the fuck out of here with that shit. No, fuck you, bitch. You know, it wasn't like, like, I feel like Tanisha and Genevieve had some kind of hate, anger in there. And there were some feelings and tension in that little fight, you know, in, in that relationship. Right. But, I, but no offense, in, in Tanisha's defense, you can't really get through someone like, like think like when from what you saw on the show that's like doesn't show up for a job and says no I'm not doing this shit doesn't show up for me when you're given another chance and just you know what I'm saying like so so you can't really fight a battle with someone like that you know what I'm saying there's or you can but it's pointless and just it stirs up anger because you're not getting anywhere right but, right but with the Tanisha and Lyric uh, fight yeah I got that was pretty that because they just they were they're two beautiful souls that could have been really really good friends I feel like to be honest right right and um I was actually I'm actually supposed to be interviewing Lyric soon as well and um I remember Naveen had made a blog back in the day saying um when they took Tanisha to the back, she was very heated. She was very overheated as well so she was throwing up afterwards and everything and um Lyric, right, Lyric never, Lyric didn't come back out. Um, I want to know how long did it take for them to kind of get that de-escalated? Because I know on TV it was like a minute. Wait, what, what thing? The fight between, uh, well not the fight, but basically the, you know, the altercation between Tanisha and Lyric. Oh, like in the, in the reunion? Yeah, like how long did it take them to kind of get that under control, you know, take them out? Uh, I mean... It was, a, I mean, they would, they, they would go at it, but then it would stop, so I, I don't know, it wasn't like, it, it got heated, right, like I said, I don't, I couldn't, I can't recall, but it wasn't, it was more than a minute for her, like, I feel like it wasn't, you know what I'm saying, I, they think they cut it up, right, I'm pretty sure. Okay, yeah, they definitely cut it up, they definitely Yeah, because they, they were going at it, and then they'd have to stop, and then I was like, at one point, my face is too, like, oh, what's going on? More so, too, like, why is this going on? Like, it, I thought they were cool. I guess, you know, I don't know. Right, and I remember... And because at that stage, of, at that point, I really didn't, except for Andrea, because, and again, I was just angry at the situation. I feel like she came into the house and, like, just, I don't know. I just feel like there was nothing really bad or interesting about her. But I guess now that I think about it, like, obviously, it was good to bring someone, you know, you that was bad to their body like you know she had to you know she had issues too and to that that you just you don't have to be bad by beating people up you can have you can be bad in, in all sorts of ways you know right right and i remember uh okay so genevieve she, uh, she finally you know enters the stage it seemed like uh you didn't really you weren't really feeling her at that time did y'all fall out or something or no, I think, like I said, I just had seen the show in some episodes, not all of them, like, not the ones where I fought for sure, but I remember seeing the one with the Osh in it, and that just seemed how they were, like, she just was, like, she was real, 
like, I don't know, I just felt not fake, just, they just wanted to fuck people over, obviously, even me, and I was supposed to be her friend, you know what I'm saying, and like I said, I don't know if it's because she thought I was going back and forth, or I I wasn't, but you know, if you're a friend, talk to me, if not, like, don't fuck me over, and she did that, I feel like, throughout, like, the show after I got along with Tanisha and Naveen and Hannah, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, and uh, Naveen said there was a time where, um... She was she was trying to embarrass Cordelia and Star was trying Star had uh, actually shut her down because she knew what she was about to do. I think it was some shirt or something. They did. Yeah, like I said, that's yeah. what I'm saying. Who does that? She would go out of her way to just prove she was a badass by insulting or being putting other people down. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, who mm. does that? Like, it's like the how how do I say it? Like those uh, Cordelia posters or whatever posters we posted was her idea and we went with it you know what I'm saying or I forgot who's I, what posters we posted but the point is it's like or was it was she even around then it was a Cordelia <laughs> y'all went around putting up flyers of a lost dog with Genevieve shit face on it oh that was Gen- okay that was cool. yeah so for Cordelia to want to do that put it that way it was the fact that like Genevieve yeah, I feel like just kind of like was just mean and rude I don't know she could feel like she was the ganged up on but at the same time I just feel like if she had let her guard down and actually unless that's who she truly is and that's a different story I don't know but she could have been just a nicer understanding person communicated better and maybe try to get along with the girls and understand them instead of just just pointing fingers saying fuck you fuck that I'm better than this look what I can do to you look what I pulled up look what I you know what I'm saying like right, right. instead of dagging at digging and dagging at someone and going out of your way to do that maybe try it the other way Right, right. And I remember uh, when, so later on, like years later, Tanisha, um, Tanisha had a, a wedding show called Tanisha Gets Married. And- oh, yeah, she invited me. Oh, okay. Did you go? And like I said, no, this is during, oh, just, I'm not lying. Like, I lost a lot of memories and shit in my past because of moments and, and opportunities because okay, of, baby. like, the drugs I was on and, right, like, right. that addiction. Because oh. of the addiction. And okay. so... Yeah, during that time, I remember I wanted to go, and I don't, I have no excuse not to have gone. You know what I'm saying? And then I wonder why I don't have friends. <laughs> <laughs> baby, it's okay. It's the past, <laughs> and it does not define you, babe. But, but that, I mean, think about it. I just complained about how I don't have close this, that, that, and this and that, and I got invited to one of, like, one of the most special people in my life and wedding, and I still didn't go. I was even going to go to my sister's, but a cousin, like, talked me into it. I guess I was... The last 10 years of my life up to five, okay, up to about four or five years ago before I got my relationship had been like, and since bad girls, that gap in between, let's just put it was just a total uh, down depression of addiction. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. So, mm-hmm. So. Sucks. They're off drugs, people. So looking back on everything now, Bad Girls Club is nothing that you regret whatsoever. Well, after talking to you, I guess not. But I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I well, because like I like I said, I was embarrassed for a minute to be a but. But then again, I was like, no, no, no. I've never been. I've never regretted it. That's I've never. Well, I don't know. I don't know. Jasmine, that's such a hard question. I don't know. Because then again, people are always like, don't do reality TV, you know. And I actually do. And have had have passion for acting. So did I? You know what I'm saying? Was that not the best move? But then again, I'm not over here being really driven about the acting part. So I don't know. Because I know a lot of people used to think we were actresses. You know what I'm saying? That we were all everything was fake. But I can assure you, it was not. So no, I guess I my season. No, I don't regret doing my season. I don't regret. Like I loved that I got to experience what I got to experience and it was fun and I have all those memories that I can still go back on YouTube and watch you know what I'm saying Mm -hmm. and and it was a good time it was really fun and everyone got to experience our personalities and our bond and our not so great bond sometimes right right so what's going on now in your life like my best like the thing like how people should communicate in a fight Tanisha getting out of jail what does she do she goes well I she did Naveen did take her straightener away from her, but it was because she hadn't been talking to us. You know, she was all mad at everyone. Right. But instead of, like, fist fighting, they yelled it out, like, a little bit, but then they made up. You know what I'm saying? They talked about it. They understood they were both hurt. They understood why the other was angry, not, well, fuck you, bitch. I'm going to pull up shit about you on the internet. You know, it was just, that's what people, that's what I feel like 
people should do more of, communicate. Right, right. So, currently, what are you doing now in your life, honey? Um, I'm single. I'm finally mentally over the really bad breakup I had about a year ago in uh, July. So, I'm living with my mom, which helps because she helps with the baby, and I'm, it helps not being alone, just in general, you know what I'm saying, right. um, for the time being. And nothing, I'm working at a Thai restaurant in Austin, in the domain. I've been there since I was pregnant, so I kind of just feel, like, loyal to them, you know? Right. And it's, they become a family. They're part of, like, Eastside King um, in Austin. It's pretty cool. So that, and then... Um, just trying to get my life together. There's so many things I want to do. Like, I want to take, I want to learn how to sew. I want to make puppy beds. I want to go start walking dogs. I went, like, my mom always says, you want to do so much, but you just never do it. And I'm like, I wish I had the drive, you know? Right. That some people have. Because I have, I want, I want to, I want to learn how to cut wood and stuff so I can start making some furniture. I want to take a design, interior, interior design class. Like, I don't know, Justin, where do I start? How do I start getting my life back on track? <laughs> I feel like this is a second opportunity, a second chance for me. My aunt passed away in February, which was really sad. Um, and so, more so for her, like, I want to do something. Um, but, yeah, I just, uh, hopefully. So, that's where I'm at, starting over in my life, basically. Well, honey, just know you definitely got the support behind you. All right? Thanks. You definitely do. <laughs> Um, y'all definitely can follow Darlene on Instagram at Dar underscore Escobar. Um, I would definitely put the link to her Instagram in the description. Darlene, is that okay with you, honey? Yeah. That's yeah, perfect. so I'll put the link to her Instagram in her description. In my description, excuse me. And... <laughs> Sorry, your story popped up. And... <laughs> I, I was like, oh, so we end with music? That's pretty cool. Woo! <laughs> so oh and one thing I wants to know too um did your did your daughter that you were talking about on the show did she ever watch the show uh, yeah I mean there was one time when she was like nine I think or eight when we were at like Ross or something and some little girls little girls came up to us or she was smaller than that and the girls were about nine or eight but she they're like oh my god you're you're, we just want to say you're our favorite actress on the Bad Girls Club. And I remember looking at them, and I'm like, why the hell are y'all watching this fucking show? You're, like, too little. And so, but I was like, thank you. And I, you know, and that, that's when I was just like, that's when I can just tell. It was acting, you know? But as she got older, obviously she knows, and she knows what it is. So, um, yeah, she's watched it. She tries not to, but she does. She's more conservative. I had to learn that she's definitely not like me. She's more like my sister, just more quiet, more, you know, conservative. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but, hey, she's a blessing in disguise and doing great, doing something great with her life. I mean, words can't. Like, my aunt got to see her before she passed away, at least graduate high school without getting pregnant. So that's a plus. Right, right. <laughs> And is there anything you would like to say to the fans, honey? I don't know. Just be really nice to people and animals. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. But just be kind in this world to everyone. We're all here for a short period of time, you know? Relax. Take your time. Even if it's five minutes late, if you're rushing, your life is more important than trying to rush and catch, cause an accident, you know? Yes, and I also have a fan named Ashley. She wanted me to tell you this personally. She says, um, Darlene, watching your struggle with drinking on the show and how you weaned yourself off alcohol on the show helped me stop drinking. So just letting you know, back in the day, you were an inspiration and you helped me. Oh, see, I'm going to cry. Maybe I'm going to start my period, but that's sweet. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Darlene, I would like to thank you so much for taking time out of your day to do this interview with me, honey. We definitely appreciate the update and God bless everything and blessings towards whatever you have going on, sweetheart. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for wanting to do it with me. Oh, no problem, baby. I'll talk to you later. Oh. See you later, honey. All right.